Coming to you from the Design Museum in London, this is a Magzone Media exclusive with fashion and brand icon Sir Paul Smith. Try to give, if you can, a voice to the Paul Smith brand. And if you can do it in 140 characters, that would even be better. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, be your own man. Yeah. I mean, the thing is that the, the uh, Paul Smith clothes aren't yeah. attention, they're not attention-seeking clothes. Yeah. They're, they're clothes that are for people who have got their own self-confidence. They're happy to wear clothes that have got a little secret inside. Yeah. So wear, wear, wear my clothes that fit your body, fit your age, and fit your lifestyle. Yeah. How do you find the secret inside? Like shirts have yeah. a coloured buttonhole, yeah. uh, colourful socks. Uh, I mean, you've got to dress to fit your character, yeah. really. But you enjoy the little secret side of it, do you? Yeah, I think yeah. that's great. I mean, yeah. and also, you know, a lot of people, as human beings, are actually full of character, or they've got sense of humour, mm. or they're, they're, um, they've got a lateral way of thinking, but in their job, they're not always mm. allowed to, yeah. to show that. So yeah. what I try to do is allow them to have this secret, mm. you know. So, Paul Smith, to what extent do you see yourself, the individual, as part of the brand? A lot of politicians who wear your clothing have alluded to that. They say that they're as much in love with the brand as they are with the person. Well, I yeah. think, I mean, because I'm... I mean, you can I, either like that or be terribly insulted. I don't know. <laughs> no, no, you know, I, I am Paul Smith. It is yeah. Paul Smith. And... Um, and so therefore, and, and I'm very hands-on, you know, mm. I've been doing it for a long time. And, and my whole studio in London where they, we have a couple of hundred people, um, about 25 designers who work with me yeah. and it's just every day we chat, we work and so it's very, if you wear Paul Smith, you're getting Paul Smith. You're not getting, yeah. you're not getting a brand, you're getting a person really, yeah. to be honest. How much time do you actually spend in that studio conceptualizing and saying this is the next thing? It's or never do, you, do, you, do you do leave that to two other people now? Absolutely you're, not. You're an executive no. creative director. Absolutely you not. cast an eye over things. Absolutely it's more to not. that though. It's, it's more to it though, isn't it? Well, if you walk around the exhibition yeah. here in London, yeah. then one, one big part of it is the studio. Mm. And uh, in the studio, it shows um, paint and pencils and paper and things done by hand. So yeah. We're very, very, we're very much about doing things by hand through conversation, and I see my guys uh, mm. and girls every day. I mean, uh, mm. and also not just the clothes design, the shop design, the graphic design. I take the photographs for all our campaigns. Mm. I work for magazines as a photographer, so mm. it's very hands-on. The older you've got, is it more difficult to develop and maintain a creative edge? Not for me personally, but mm. uh, for many people, yes, because they, uh, they have a certain point of view when they're in their 20s and a certain lifestyle, and then that goes along and along and along with their age. But what they often find difficult is to replace the older, mature customer yeah. with younger ones. Amazing at Paul Smith, we have kept our older ones and one mature ones, and um, also managed to get the younger ones. Which but how, really do, how do you, Paul Smith, replenish the creative energy? By being surrounded by young people, by being a very curious person, by, mm. in terms of uh, I'm always aware of the new exhibition that's on, the new designers, just because I'm interested, mm. not because I force it. And a lot of people I ha uh, have to work at that, and I don't work at it. Mm. Let's talk about the cycling, if we can. It's, it's a, is it a passion or an obsession? It's an uh, obsession, isn't it? Well, um, bordering on? Nearly. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Nearly. You wanted to become a professional cyclist. Yeah. You've been asked this question a gazillion times yeah. before. But um, the accident. It, yeah. it was fortuitous. It was lucky, it was wasn't it? It was brilliant, yeah. yeah. I literally yeah. fell into fashion. Yeah. <laughs> literally. Not the first time you've said that, sir. Yeah. Uh, no, about 400th <laughs> time I've said yeah. that, yeah. actually. Um, uh, yeah, but I mean, um, yeah, that was the, that was the way I, I discovered fashion, by suddenly discovering the world of creativity by chance, by just going to have a, a, a drink with some friends who chose a pub that happened to be where the art yeah. students went to drink. Yeah. So, it was brilliant. Yeah, come on. What was the eureka moment, though? That you um, must have seen something that said, this is where I want to be. It was the be. conversation, yeah. and it was the youthfulness of the, of the group, and the fact that their conversation was about things I'd never heard of, like 
the Bauhaus or mm. you know Le Corbusier or yeah. Rosalie Kandinsky and yeah. all these sort of words and things that I'd never yeah. actually heard of and I thought what's what do they mean you yeah. know and then I was absolutely fascinated by the whole thing and that it almost felt once you'd got involved in that it was putting a hand into a glove was it? yeah I just yeah. I just thought I wonder if you can yeah. earn a living yeah. doing something that's so yeah. You know, it seemed to be so full of yeah. life and energy yeah. and and uh, any and creativity. Military tailoring is where you started, though. Yeah, Pauline what, what, and what, what? military two yeah. things. Really. Yeah, yeah. Pauline because she studied at the Royal yeah. College of Art and became my girlfriend and my wife, and so the Royal College mm -hmm. of Art training was very strict in the time when she was there and very much about couture fashion so it was really how things were made yeah. correctly and now uh, education in uh, fashion is a lot more um, of course it's about design but it's a lot more about marketing and networking and getting your you know, name out there whereas then it was very much mm. about how to cut a pattern and how to make clothes mm. and then in the evening military uh, tailoring absolutely correct yeah um, because that mm. was I went to a tailor that um, that created ceremonial dress, mm. so not not everyday military dress. Yeah, yeah. And of course, that's all about making people look really important mm. and slim, and, and that's all done through the cut of the clothes. Mm. So I learnt a lot from him. When we continue more with Sir Paul Smith and those personal touches that have ensured his brand's longevity. ENCA.com